Hey, welcome to Life Church. I'm Steve Gambrill. I'm the lead pastor. And what you're about to watch is our worship and our church. I know God has got a great word for you. Come on, let's get this started. Father, I am yours. My sin and shame there at the cross I'm letting go so I come come back to where I belong holding your presence into your arms Father to you So we decided uh, to do this emphasis. And you know, at the beginning of a year, it's just good to focus us all in the same direction. And obviously there's not just this campus here, so there's four campuses to bring in line. And so sometimes we like to put a name or a theme over a month just so that everybody can be on the same page so that we know in Leeds, they're talking about the same thing in Warsaw, in Belfast, we're all on the same emphasis. And we really felt this best life emphasis was something we wanted to start with. But I wanna unpack 
unpack and have my dig at it today because it can sound a little bit, I don't know, Hollywood, a little bit like, you know, you saw the trailer we play where there's people sliding in the mud and running through the wind and people jumping on each other's backs and, and it's all exciting and it almost looks like a commercial and you can look at that and go, yeah, 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 that's nice, but that is not my life. I don't slide through the mud to have fun. I'm just in the mud. I don't have somebody that I want on my back. I have a monkey on my back. I, I, I'm not getting up and going to the bus stop in the rain in the morning, excited like I'm flying into work. I am dragging my feet into the job that I hate, that I still have to go to on Monday. And I prayed to God last year, he would take the job away and give me a better one. And he hasn't, and I still have the job. I mean, that's like the reality, okay? of what many of us live in. We're not ignoring the reality. We're just shifting your perspective to say there is better and better comes by us understanding God's best life for us. And I just want to take my uh, session this morning to maybe look at why we don't live our best life. Because the truth is we can say we want it and we can pray about it and we can write our thing on a, on a note, which I hope you're doing out on the board out there where it says you can pick up a, a piece of paper and write what you're believing for. In fact, we went and looked and some of our team are praying and on there some people are saying, my best life I'm believing for a husband. And some are on there saying, I'm believing for a wife. And we just wonder whether you need to find each other in this room somehow. And there you go. We have solved your miracle that you are asking for. I'm just saying, you never know. You should hang around the board and see what people are putting up there. <laughs> Especially if you like the look of the person that's putting it up there. And so, you know, you can say, well, my best life, this is what my ideal would be, but if we're honest sometimes, we're believing and we've been asking God for the same thing sometimes for years. And it's not happened. And we ask God that we would have better in this area of our life and it just doesn't have seemed to have come together in the way that we believed it comes together. But in John 10.10, 10, which is a verse that we are hanging a lot of this around, it talks about this life that God has for us, this life that he destined for us to all walk in. And it says in the Message Bible, a thief comes to still steal, kill and destroy, but I came so that they can have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. More and better life than they ever dreamed of. So I go back to what I said a moment ago when I was praying. We either believe it or we don't. Okay, it's either the truth or the Bible is a book of lies. But I think you're here this morning because you are believing and you are saying, that's what I think God has for my life. I, I think there is better. I think that this life, and I love it says real because it's not fake. It's not phony. It's not this glossy pretend life. He came so that you can have real, eternal, more and better than you ever dreamed of. Now, some of you, you need to start dreaming all over again because some of you, your dreams are pathetic and God's a big God and you need to actually expand your dream. But we can have a scripture like that and we can read it and we can have it as a fridge magnet and we can quote it and we can keep referring to it all through the month of January and beyond. But the truth is that in order for us to have that as a reality in our life, we also have to do some work. I know, it sucks. I know you just like God to zap you and give you the best life ever, but God works in partnership with us. God is a good father. God wants to give you things that when he gives it to you, you know what to do with it, how to unpack it and how to have it work in your life. And so I want us all this morning to do a little practical work, okay? This is gonna be a message that makes you have to do this. Is that all right? You might not wave your hanky at me and shout hallelujah and run around the building because you felt the anointing. You might go home with a list of notes. 
And those list of notes are going to be things this year that you're going to have to come back to, like a homework page. And go, I think I need to go back to what I've stopped working on because actually God's word's not faulty. I've just stopped working some of the things that God has taught me or is teaching me how to live. Now, let's start by this being the first practical thing that we break this down with because that's a big statement, your best life. What does that mean? Well, well, some of you might go, well, I like my life. I don't need any more than what I've got right now. My life is good. But I believe in all of our lives this year, we can go for something better than was last year. Okay, so I want to challenge you this year so that this word becomes practical in three areas to begin to focus in and say, what would be better for me this year in this area? So spiritual, natural, and relational. Just start there. What would be a better life for me this year in my spiritual life? How can I take my life from where it is right now and by the end of 2018 spiritually, I can look back over the year and go, this year for me spiritually was a better year. It was, it was a better year. It was a best life year spiritually. Maybe, let's get really practical. Maybe for some of you, and you don't have to put your hand up if this is you, you can, you can just note it because you don't want to be embarrassed by it, but maybe some of you should read your Bible. I know, it's a shock, isn't it? That it doesn't have to just get opened on Sunday by a preacher. You can actually open it regularly. You can even get an app that helps you how to read it. You can even set your phone so it beeps and says, read me, read me, read me. And I know you know how to look at your phone because many of you are on it many hours of the day, posting posts and liking likes and commenting on comments. So I know you have the power to do this, but sometimes we take something like this subject and go, I just, I feel like I didn't have a better year. And I want to bust you by going, yes, it's because you didn't do anything different to help your year be different. So, so let's just start there. I'm going to have a better spiritual year this year because I am going to pray. What, you mean like on my own? Yeah, like on your own. What, you mean like, like, do I have to go in a prayer closet? I don't know. Maybe we should lock you in a cupboard to get you praying. Uh, maybe that would be a good place for you to start. Well, you, how long does it have to be? I don't care. Just begin. So by the end of 2018, you could be the biggest intercessor prayer warrior in our church. Your year would look completely different. I know this is like, like simple, but why is it the simple stuff that we avoid? So spiritually, how can your life this year, maybe going on Bible college, maybe taking the evening course, maybe you say, well, I don't really feel like I know how to study the word. You just saw it on church news, starts on Tuesday in January. Get the information and make your life spiritually a better year. It's really not that hard. What about in the natural How many more times are you going to try and squeeze your thighs in those jeans? How much more baby oil are you going to rub on the side of your legs to get in your pants? Don't pretend you don't do it. Some of you are like, that's a good trick. I didn't know. It's like lathering up the turkey to get the trousers on. Steve does it every week. No. In the natural, what are some of the things that would make your life better? Seriously. Many of you don't know, some of you do, but I had a real struggle with my weight many years ago. And I was overweight and I was unfit and very unhealthy. And a doctor told me, Mrs. Gamble, you are fat. And he said the word fat. He was very un-PC. I could sue him today. But back then, he just said it, and he was from Yorkshire, and he didn't really care. And the morning that he said it to me was the morning that I got out of bed at 6 a.m. in the dark. I had got dressed, and I didn't realize I had put two odd shoes on. And I had a high heel on and a flat shoe. And I will never forget walking out of the doctor's office highly offended like this. So not only was I fat, but I was incapable of dressing myself. Sometimes God just adds insult to injury to get you to wake up and smell the coffee. 
Do you want to live a long life? Then quit the fags. Hello? Oh, what you're saying, you're banning smoking in this church. No, I'm saying I want you to live a long life. I don't want you to get lung cancer. I want you to see your grandchildren. Oh, I don't like this church anymore telling me not to smoke. No, I'm just saying, do you want a better life? Do you want to run through the wind with your arms in the air? <laughs> do you want to run through the fields like this? Or do you want to... <laughs> Which one do you want? Come on, people. Let's not be so religious. Oh, I don't know what you mean by my best life, Lord. Do you mean I'm going to be a missionary in outer Africa? No, I mean you're going to quit smoking, stop eating burgers every single meal, and you're going to be kind to your kids. Lord, I don't like that word. I want Steve back up. I want someone else to preach. <laughs> That's what happens when mama gets up. Your spiritual life, how could that be better? Your natural life, how could that be better? Your relational life, how could that be better? Get get better. <laughs> and don't tell me you don't know because I, if you're in here and every relationship in your world is perfect, please come see me after the service. Lay your hands on me, pass over your anointing because none of us can say that. We can all have a better relationship, a better marriage, a better friendship, a better relationship with our kids or with our friends. We can all do something. You can take a step. So when we say your best life, let's not have it out there. Let's practicalize it. So that when you listen next week and when you listen to a message, you're going, I'm believing for these three things. That's what I'm believing for. I'll just bring it down because God wants to prove himself to you. And that's why when Steve talked about giving, it's like maybe for you, that's a test. And God's like, let's just start there. Try, try this year giving and see what happens because I want to help you get to your best life. Now, I have so much to say in, 14 minutes to say in. This always happens to me. I'm gonna get better at preaching in 2018. I really am. I'm gonna work on it. Okay. I want to talk, therefore, the title of this message, which will be done in 13 minutes' time, is Holes and Lids. Holes and Lids. I want to just identify two ways that we don't get to live our best life. Because there's nothing wrong on God's end. There's nothing wrong with His Word. He is good to His Word. But often, we don't feel we're living our best life. We don't feel the abundant life. And then we get mad at God or mad at the church or mad at others. But God came to give us abundant life. But pro the problem is that we often don't know how to hold that life, contain that life, and overflow with that life because we either have a whole issue or a lid issue. I could put it this way, we either have drainers in our life or a container on our life. Holes and lids, the drainers and the containers that stop you being able to live your best life. Now, let's start for a moment on holes. When God is pouring out abundant life, overflowing life, joy, peace that passes understanding. I could go through the whole list. He has love that has no end and no uh, limit to it, but our love is limited. He has peace that passes understanding, but our peace runs out at the first sign of a bill that we weren't expecting. He, he has strength when we are weak, but we can't seem to find the strength. There's a best life God has for you, but sometimes you're like, why don't I feel any of it? And it's because you have a life that's like this. God's pouring out his best to you, but this is your life. It's not that God's not pouring, but there's a problem in the vessel of your life. We have some holes that this year, if you don't fix your holes, you'll end the year going, I feel exactly the same. I feel they got overflowing and I got nothing. I feel they got answers and I got none. But it's not on God's end. He pours it out on all flesh. But some of our lives have holes, so you're gonna have to fix your holes this year. It's a whole fixing year for you. I'm gonna take you to Colossians 3. It's a long piece of scripture. But it's some homework for you to do it. You might not like it if you came for an ooh and an ah this morning. This is more of a ouch, but that's okay. 
It says this, Colossians 3, I'm going to read it from the message. That's why I'm putting it up for you to see. So if you're serious, ask the person next to you, are you serious? Because even that's a question. Are you playing Christianity? Are you serious? Are you in and out of church whenever you feel like it? Are you serious? Do you really want your breakthrough? Are you serious? It's like you've got to get serious about serving God, serious about loving God, serious about it. Or you can be casual, but if you're casual, guess what? Don't get mad when this happens. This is some of your life. And I want to help you. But you're going to have to fill the holes. If you're serious about living this new resurrection, better life with Christ, then act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along. Some of you even need to change the way you walk. Let's just, let's just start there. Living my best life. No! Head up! Child of God, today's gonna be a good day. I'm happy. Things aren't right, but God inside me is right. Well, I know we live in the pigeon shuffling people communities in Yorkshire, e bagum, just shuffle along, but we actually need to get serious about what we're carrying inside of us. Don't shuffle along. Eyes to the ground, absorbed with things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. And see things from His perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. Verse 5. And that means, here's the work. Here's the holes. That means killing off. Everything connected to that way of death. And if you're not sure what that is, he's even going to spell some of them out. And this is why we don't like the Bible. Sexual promiscuity. Well, I came to church and I just didn't feel his presence. Yeah, that's because you slept around. Throughout the week, you had a one night stand and you're now feeling the shame of that and the dirt of that. And God's like, I have better for you than that. I, I have wholeness for you, but you've come to church with your holes and I'm trying to heal you and fill you, but you have to do something about the things that you're doing. God doesn't judge you. He's not waving a finger over you. He's just saying, I want you to have a better life. But we're gonna have to this year fill that hole. The reason why you're doing that is there's a hole in you. And I want to fill the hole because that's the better life for you. The list goes on. Sexual promiscuity, imp impurity, lust. Listen to this one. Doing whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like it. Hello, young people. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Doing whatever you feel like. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like being honest. I don't feel like showing up for my assignment. I don't feel like I should be kind. Your feelings will lead you amok this year and put holes in your destiny this year. Fill the holes. He goes on to talk about not doing whatever, not grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. Hello, young men. That's a life shaped by things and feelings instead of by God. It's a life with holes in. It's because of this kind of thing that God is about to explode in anger. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better, but you now know better. So make sure it's all gone for good. And if you didn't like that first list and you're ticking the boxes and you're like, I'm not sexually promiscuous, I'm not being doing all that stuff, it doesn't stop. Oi, and that bad temper and that irritability and that meanness and that profanity and dirty talk, I mean, and that lying is the next line. God's like, I'm just letting you know, I have a best life for you. But you got some holes and you gotta fill them. And if you just choose one, at least it would hold a little more than it held before. 
If you begin to fill your holes this year, then I can begin to help you have a better life. The leakage is all inside of you. There are things that are draining your best life, your best marriage, and God wants you to fix it. Well, how do I fill the holes? Well, God's really kind and tells us that too. And he goes on in verse 12 saying, so chosen for this new life, dress yourself, fill your holes, clothe them with compassion. Kindness, if you need to get rid of the hole called meanness, start filling it with kindness. Kindness, compassion, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even tempered, not hot tempered, content with second place and quick to forgive. He's like, this is how you fill your holes. It doesn't get filled in a prayer line. It gets filled by you going away and dealing with your temper and making that the hole you fill this year. And then it says, let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, step with each other and cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense and sing your hearts out to God. In other words, you need peace, you need community, you need the word, you need gratitude and you need worship. That's what you need to fill these holes. Lids are containers. It's our control of how our life will look. It's our lid of how our life will go. It's our level of believing and accepting and trusting and stepping out lids. The problem with lids is when God comes to pour the best life in, guess what? You can't receive it. Hey, as we finish our time together, I wanna to ask you, have you ever invited Jesus in your life? You know, I was at a point in my life, I didn't know who Jesus was. I had to pray a prayer and say, Jesus, I believe you're real. Will you come inside my heart? Forgive me of my sins and my past mistakes. And Jesus did and he's changed my life as a result of that. That's what the Bible teaches in Romans chapter 10, verse nine. It says this, it says that if you believe, that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved. It's just that simple. So why do you right now in your own way and in your own words, ask Jesus in your heart, it will be the best decision that you ever make.